Hello everybody, how you doing? It is Vicious, and it is once again tutorial time. Now, if you tuned in and you saw a tutorial I made just the other day showing with virtual audio cable how to connect two USB microphones to a single input so that you can uh, use two microphones for your program and stuff, some people were crafty and they caught on that the source does not have to be a microphone. It could be any source, whatever you would like it to be. So, for instance, if you would like to play music on a media player on one of those sources and then use your microphone for the other source, you could, in theory, well, not just in theory, you could literally have your music and your microphone going to the same spot. And with your recording program, you could have music and microphone recorded through your microphone only, or through your virtual line, I should say, which is acting as your microphone. But that is very basic. That was like the starter tutorial for virtual audio cable. And today I'm going to go ahead and step it up and take it to the next level with an advanced tutorial. Because it's advanced, I'm going to go a little bit slower, talk about details a little bit more. So I know some people hate rambling, but you know, as a tutorial, I'd rather it be slow and boring and teach you everything you need to know rather than fast and pointless. So the easiest way to make you understand what I will be showing you is to make a diagram. So I took the time to do that already. I made a nice little diagram here that I'm going to explain. We have two sources again, like last time. The difference is, as you can tell from labeling, that the way that this is set up right now, one source, you plus your program will hear. The other source, the second source, only your program will hear it. So the benefit of this is with the, say, music plus microphone combo that someone might want to try out. If you have your music and your microphone for, forwarded to the same virtual line and you record with that, you won't hear your music, only your program will. But if you use this layout here, you could hear the music and then your program would pick up the music and your microphone as part of the recording. And you don't want to have the microphone as part of what you hear, so you have to make sure it's separate. So that's why it's further down the line on uh, VAC2. So let's break into the diagram. Sources, I have two again. And source examples, it could be a microphone, a media player, a line in, or just about anything else you can use as some kind of source. I'm going to pull up two examples here. If I go to my recording devices on Windows, and if it decides to load, apparently it hates me right now. There it is. Okay, so my line in can be used as a source. My virtual lines can be used as a source. My microphone can be used as a source. Anything else you can get under this recording tab. I anything under your playback tab could be forwarded through a repeater to a virtual line, and then obviously you could use the virtual line as a source. And lastly, when I say media player, some media players like Winamp or Foobar, many others, allow you to go into configuration. And if you go to your options, Usually under output is where you're going to find it. You'll be able to go to configure. And instead of using primary sound driver, which is basically the same as saying Windows default, you can change it to a device manually. So in this case, if I set my output to virtual line one, it would send all the audio from Winamp to the virtual line instead of to my sound card. So I wouldn't hear it. And then it would be part of this diagram. All right. So let get started. Let's close this up. Close that up. R is the repeaters. You'll notice that there are four of them in here. You don't need a repeater for this section because inside of your software, like XSplit, Fraps, uh, Mumble, TeamSpeak, Ventrilo, whatever, you're just going to set Virtual Line 2 as your microphone. But everything else is going to need a repeater. So what do I use this diagram for? This is actually a setup I have used. I use it for being an asshole. No, I'm just kidding. I use this for when I was recording live streams and I have a soundboard. Let me open it up real quick. Do I still have that? Do, 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 do. So many folders on my computer, I get lost. All right, so I have a soundboard that I made and it has audio cues that I like to include in my show sometimes just to mess around. You know, I got the more all that stuff in here. Round one, fight. And I got my Arnold quotes. I just love Arnold. Stop it! 
and you know StarCraft <laughs> and I got stuff like this which I'm not gonna touch it yeah I am all right Cl cover your ears what the fuck? <laughs> Okay, all right, I love that sound effect. So, basically, what was happening is I was using these sounds in my recordings, and they would show up in the recording, but the people who were talking to me on Mumble couldn't hear the sound effects, and so the comic effect was pointless, because if the people interacting with me on the show couldn't hear the sound effects, then what was the point of playing them? How did I fix that? Well, I decided to do this. As my source one, the source that me and the software will hear, I used line in, so I'm going to grab a repeater and set that up. I'm going to choose the input as my line in, and as the output is going to go to virtual line one, I would start that and had it running. Connected to the line in of my computer, by the way, is my HP touchpad, and on my HP touchpad I have that soundboard, so that, therefore. When I'm inside of a game and the game is full screen, I can still just press on the touchpad buttons of my soundboard and have it play. So now the soundboard is here in, in virtual line one, and it's just sitting in the abyss. What we need to do is we need to send it through a repeater to our DAC. DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter. In layman's terms, that means your sound card. So I'm going to choose virtual line one, and I would send that to my headphone amplifier, my HDP. Let me go into detail about the DAC so I don't confuse anybody. Going yet again to the Windows playback devices. We'll have to wait, apparently, because it's slow. And we'll do it again just to see if it... Come on. There we go. All right, so on here I have my speakers. Where, where are they? Here we go. Onboard audio. This is my Realtek sound card that's on my motherboard for my computer. Here is my headphone amplifier. If I had the MMX 300 uh, plugged in on here, that would show up. Any of your sound devices are your DACs because it takes the digital signal from your computer and it converts it to an analog signal for you to hear. So that's what the DAC is. And then right now, I'm using my headphones. So now we've got a sound channel going like this from the soundboard to our headphones so we can hear it but how do we get it into our software we're going to forward it once again one virtual line to a second virtual line you can do that you can have one virtual line going to another and that's how we separate things so virtual line one to virtual line two and you would start that repeater and now we got the sound sitting in a secondary place and this is where we're going to introduce the second source in this case, I would always use my microphone because I'm talking to people. I'm going to pick up a fourth repeater. Drag there. All right. And I would choose my microphone, my steady, uh, my stereo Getty microphone, and I would send that to virtual line two. And I would start that. So now, hosted in virtual line one is just the first source, and hosted in virtual line two is both sources. And then the last step is to go into your software. And in my case, I'm using Mumble when I'm talking to people. I'd go into Configure and Settings. And for the input, I would change the device from my microphone or Windows default, whatever it says in there, and I would change it to Virtual Line 2. In doing that, everything would be set up in such a way that now anybody on the uh, voice client with me would be able to hear the soundboard and still hear me talk. And I would not hear me talk because the microphone is not connected to this first section, which is going to my headphones. And everyone's a happy person. I think that you uh, seeing this will open up ideas for you so that you can use virtual audio cable in other advanced ways. Some of the other things I've seen people trying to do, uh, again, the XSplit community forums, is they like to have music when they're doing a live stream, but one of two things either they don't want people to hear the music because it's their music choice and they don't want to you know have other people listening to their music in case they don't like it or two they want to force people to listen to music but they don't want to hear the music because it disturbs them when they're gaming so you can think of creative ways with virtual audio cable to separate two sources like this so that you hear one 
and the program or the people here or the other and therefore you can achieve easily things like having only your audience hear your music and you don't or vice versa only you hear the music and the audience doesn't uh, so hopefully the advanced tutorial opened up some eyes kind of gave you some ideas of how deep you can go with this program if you need more assistance if you need more tutorials then let me know and i'll see what i can do for you but i think that's going to close it off for today hope you guys found it useful and i'll see you in the next videos